In 2016, Apple introduced a new interface for GarageBand for iOS called Live Loops. Live Loops gives users more of a pattern or clip-based method for making music, similar to the way Ableton Live works with clips in session mode, and very similar to how Launchpad for iOS works. Let's see how you can integrate the Jamstick into a Live Loops workflow and come up with some interesting results. First things first, the Live Loops interface is a grid of cells. In this song, you'll notice the familiar icons in the vertical column on the left, they are drum and keyboard instruments. Each horizontal row to the right of the icon is a cell that uses the instrument on the left, as pictured by the icon. Across the bottom of the screen, you'll see a different set of icons called triggers. Tapping a trigger launches all of the clips in the vertical column above the trigger. Cells can record MIDI from a jamstick playing an instrument track, or they can contain an audio loop. One quick way to know whether a cell is MIDI or audio is to look at the cell color. MIDI is green and audio is blue. In this video, we're going to explore recording MIDI into various cells. If your jamstick isn't already connected, power it up and make sure Bluetooth is enabled on your iOS device. Now in GarageBand, we can go to Settings, also known as the wrench icon, and select Advanced. Then, Bluetooth MIDI Devices, and click your Jamstick ID in the Bluetooth MIDI Devices chooser. So let's create a new song. We're going to click the plus icon in the upper right hand corner of the My Songs menu. And we're going to start by selecting New. On screen is the empty Live Loops interface. Clicking the plus icon launches your selection for loops or instruments, and we'll select instruments. From within the keyboard group, I'm going to select alchemy and a patch from the mallets category called woodblock space. You'll notice that live loops defaults to a length of four bars for a cell indicated in the timeline. This is editable by clicking the bar length indicator on the right in the timeline, but we'll leave it at four bars for now. If we select record in the transport bar, we can begin to record our performance into the cell. Once we're happy with the take, we can open the track controls to help shape what we've just recorded. Volume, panning, compression, EQ, and effects are all in the output settings. Or we can modify the part by quantizing, transposing, or allowing merge recordings for future takes. Now unlike the tracks interface for GarageBand, the cells in Live Loops are set to repeat at their designated bar length, and it's possible to have multiple cells repeating at different bar length intervals. So for our first cell, we recorded four bars, but our next cell, we're going to record and edit down to one bar, and then we'll record a couple of two bar cells. We're going to copy and paste some of the cells in our first column into other columns using the cell editor in the bottom left corner. With the cell editor active in blue, we can select a clip and see the options available. We're going to copy and then select an empty cell in the same row and paste it there. Triggers are the row of arrow icons across the bottom of the Live Loops interface, and when pressed, they launch every clip in the vertical column above the trigger. Launching a new trigger while other cells are already playing will launch your new queued cells at the next snap value for the grid, as displayed to the right in the timeline. The snap value defaults to one bar. For example, 
Launching a new set of cells on beat 3 of the current bar won't take effect until the current bar is finished. You're not limited to using triggers to launch cells. You can launch cells individually just by selecting them. To fill a cell with an audio loop, you'll need to find and audition the audio you'd like to use. Tapping the loops icon in the upper right corner will drop down a chooser that includes search functionality. You can search or scroll through the loops library and listen to the loop that you're interested in just by tapping the loop name. Once you find something you like, you can drag it into an existing or a new audio track. If you try to drag audio into a MIDI track, you'll see this error message. Once you've got the parts recorded in the cells that you want, there are a number of ways that you can launch the cells in a recording that you can share, using triggers, selecting the cells individually, or an approach that does both. Pressing record will launch live loops into a mode where everything played from a cell is recorded into traditional GarageBand instrument and audio tracks in the background. Working with live loops is a different approach to working within GarageBand, and the workflow change might inspire you differently than the traditional linear approach. Hopefully this video has helped answer some questions about live loops and give you some tools for working in the interface. Good luck! Connect your jamstick and start making music.